Alright, this video goes um, into section 10.2 in the book. We're talking about central angles and minor and major arcs. So, we're first talk about what a central angle is. The central angle is an angle whose vertex is in the center of a circle. So, angle ACB is a central angle in circle C. So, we outline here my vertex is in the center of the circle. So it makes it a central angle. You can think of it a slice of pizza. So when an angle whose measure is less than 180 degrees, so an angle, ACB, when it's less than 180 degrees, it intercepts an arc, and that arc is considered a minor arc. So in the picture above, if the measure of ACB is clearly less than a straight line, less than 180 degrees, the intercepted arc, AB is a minor arc. So from point A to point B, it's considered a minor arc. Now when that arc intercepts, I'm sorry, when that angle intercepts that minor arc, the leftover points are considered a major arc. So our minor arc is AB, and our major arc are all the remaining points. Okay, so keep pausing the video as you need to. When we write minor arcs, you notice that we're using two capital letters with an arc symbol above them, and those letters represent the endpoints. Major arcs use three capital letters with an arc symbol, and semicircles also use three capital letters. And remember that a semicircle is half a circle. So you want to look for a diameter. The diameter helps you find the semicircle. So some examples here. We have um, minor arc AB. Another example would be minor arc ED. And there's a lot of other minor arcs. EB, CE, AE. Your major arc, I know my endpoints for the one listed is A and B. I need to cover point B. But this is my major arc. Okay? Okay, I believe I left off um, with the major arcs. Another major arc would be C, B, and around the E. Again, the first and the last letter are the endpoints of the R. Um, our semicircle, you'll be able to kind of look and see if the diameter is mentioned in the arc for the semicircle. So we have EAB, so we start at E, pass over A, and stop at B. And EB is a diameter. It's a chord that goes through the center of the circle. Um, our other semicircle, ABC, starts at A crosses through B and ends at C. And again, AC is considered a diameter because it's a chord that goes through the center of the circle. Okay, in order to measure our arcs, because it's a central angle, the measure of the angle is equal to the measure of the arc. So the measure of angle ACB is 50 degrees, and the measure of arc AB is also 50 degrees. Now, if I wanted to know the measure of the major arc a, D, and around B, then I would have to take the difference between 360 degrees and the 50 degree minor arc, giving me a result of 310 degrees. So let's see if we can find the measure of each of these arcs. Okay, and it tells us our
C was 70 degrees, and the measure of our C B was 200 degrees, and I know that the measure of our A B C would have been 270 degrees because I can add them together. So we look at this example. Take a minute and read it. All right, we want to find the measure of our AC. And AC is made up of our AB and AC. So when we add them together, we get a total of 137 degrees. Next, we have major arc A, C, D. So we start at A, and we end at C, and we make sure we pass over C. So we need to add three arcs together this time. So A, C, D is made up of three minor arcs. So we took our previous work of 137 and added it to 83. We get 220. Okay, so next we have the measure of major arc ADC. So we're starting at A and ending at C. And because our middle letter is D, we need to pass over D on the way to C. Since we knew the measure of arc AC, rather than adding all three arcs together again, we could have just subtracted the minor arc of 137 from 360 to get 223. You also could have added 83, 61, and 79, but this is just another way to think of it. Alright, our last one, we have arc EBD, so our endpoints are E, and D, kind of passing over D. So again, to look at the minor arc and subtract the minor arc from 360 would be a much simpler way than adding all those other arcs together. All right, lastly, we have um, congruent circles and arcs. The two circles are congruent circles if they have the same radii. And two arcs are congruent arcs if they have the same measure, and if their arcs are the same circle or congruent. So I'm just going to draw a quick example. So right now I have concentric circles, and if I intercept those arcs, if this is a 70 degree angle, then I know this arc is 70 degrees because it's a central angle. This arc is also 70 degrees. So I have two arcs that are congruent because they share the same central angle. And we'll look at more examples of these tomorrow.